What's up everybody, Noah from Stage 3 Motorsports here, and today we wanted to bring you a video kind of talking about first impressions and our thoughts on the new Bronco. Now, quick disclaimer, there's a lot of videos, and obviously Ford's on Reveal, that are just full-on spec videos that talk about every little detail, every package, everything that's in all the trim options. And I'm not gonna do that in this video. I really do wanna just focus in on kind of our impressions and what I'm excited about for this platform versus just doing an info dump on you guys. The other thing I wanted to put in there is we're also going to be just focusing more on the two-door and four-door regular Broncos, not the Bronco Sport. I think the Sport looks good as a crossover and it does have its market. It'll probably compete well with the Renegade, but I don't want to go too deep into that. So we're going to stay focused there. The other thing that's worth noting is that obviously this is still before production. So some of the info I have in here might change from Ford and we may find out more information after. So at the time of seeing this video, I'm going to try and give you the most up-to-date info, but that doesn't necessarily mean that in two months that will be completely accurate. Now, with all that out of the way, the biggest question that we've been asked leading up to the Broncos release and that we continue to get asked now that it's been revealed is, are we going to work with Bronco and are we getting a project truck that we're gonna build that's a Bronco? And the answer is absolutely yes. We've been super stoked on this truck for a long time now. I've been checking out a lot of spy shots, you know, trying to follow up on the, the news surrounding it up to this point. And I was there watching the reveal as soon as it came out. So. We're really, really looking forward to it. We're gonna try and get our hands on a Bronco as soon as we possibly can to start building it and kind of test fitting for aftermarket. So you can definitely keep your eye out for that once they start hitting the ground and everybody's able to start working on them and developing parts. But I figured we'd give you the heads up early. So one of the first things I wanna cover with the Bronco is the overall exterior design. I think Ford knocked it out of the park with this truck. They look really, really good. Both the two and the four door are awesome. They have that kind of retro styling that's a throwback to the first generation. And it also reminds me a little bit of an International Scout, which is a good thing. They're very clean, boxy, not a lot of extra vents and little doodads bolted onto it. It's pretty simple lines. So I think that lends itself really well to these trucks. The other thing is there's a lot of good color options that come with different trim levels. And I think probably my favorite that I've seen is either the Area 51 or that Cactus Gray. I like those really neutral tone colors with a little bit of hint of green or blue in there. So those look excellent on this truck. The other thing is obviously with that retro styling, you get the wider kind of squared off black grill. You've got round headlights in there, which with or without the DRLs, I think look really good. And then there's a few other little things like the limb line tie downs in the front corners. And you get that full size spare on the back, which is more of a functional thing than just a straight up looks sort of addition, but I like that it does have a full size spare. There's no silly spare underneath the truck or something that's not, you know, an actual spare where they put a kit in there for like a fix a flat. So I'm really glad that they stuck with that. It definitely helps keep the traditional look and overall the Bronco is solid in the style department. Next up is one of the most controversial areas of the Bronco and that's talking more about the engine options. And I know everybody wanted a 5.0 or you know some sort of V8 stuffed into this thing. I totally get it. I think that everybody's on the same page that a 5.0 would have been cool, but I think a lot of us know realistically deep down inside that Ford wasn't really gonna do that, especially with it being built on sort of a modified Ranger platform. So what we got is that 2.3 liter EcoBoost four cylinder and the 2.7 liter V6. That's also an EcoBoost that we've seen in the F-150. Now, I think these are actually still two really good engine options for this truck. And if you've driven the Ranger like I have, you probably know that that 2.3 is actually surprisingly powerful, especially in a smaller, lighter vehicle. And I think it's gonna really perform well here in the Bronco. It is a small motor, it's a four cylinder. I get the uh, hesitation there. But with the turbo on there and just the way Ford has engineered it, they actually make a lot more power than you'd anticipate. And there's a bit of room to tune and improve that motor if you wanted to make a little more power on top of that. But I think it's gonna work well. And the 27 V6 is another motor that we've driven pretty extensively in the F-150s, which I also thought really kind of punched above its weight. So with that as an upgraded engine option, I think it will be more than enough, even if you're sizing up and doing the Sasquatch package with 35s or you're gonna add 37s or something later on down the road, I think it'll turn it just fine. Now with that, I will say personally, I do wish there was still some sort of naturally aspirated engine option. Turbos can be a little finicky off-road and sometimes I worry about the reliability there. That's personal preference. I don't know that Ford will ever add an option like that to these trucks or not. We'll see what happens over time. Maybe they'll bring out more options in later years, but as I said, so far with our experience with the EcoBoost, they've held up really well. And since the Bronco is a direct competitor to the Jeep, I also feel like this is still 
quite a bit <laughs> ahead of where Jeep's V6s are, especially the older Pentastar V6s and stuff like that. They're just more powerful, more efficient. I think it's really going to kind of give them a run for their money in the powertrain department. Now, of course, with the engine options, you got to talk about the transmission and Ford is offering a seven speed manual or that 10 speed automatic. I'm glad they offered the seven speed. I really thought it was going to be auto only. So I'm really excited to hear that there is another option, even though that seven speed is only available on the smaller two, three. Would have been nice to have it on both. This is a little unfortunate, but I still think that that's an excellent pairing. And that seven speed transmission is actually more like a six speed with a crawl gear at the front of it. So having that extra low crawl gear with that little motor, I think is gonna really benefit it. So you can have the torque, not just coming from the engine, but in the way the truck is actually geared to run. And as a more trail capable rig, it makes a lot of sense because the Bronco isn't so much a desert Baja Blaster like the Raptor is. It's a lot more of a technical trail rig. So both of those options I think are good for a lot of people. Usually the argument anyways is that autos are typically a lot nicer off-road for trail driving just because there's a bit more control and you don't have to dance on the pedals as much. So really depends on what you're going for, but either option will be good. It just is going to be a personal preference. Now, one of the things I know people are going to be a little bit torn on and are still a little upset about with the Bronco is the lack of a solid front axle. They went independent front suspension on this truck, and I know that it would have been cool to see a solid front axle. I actually thought Ford might commit to that, especially because that's where the Wrangler competes and the Wrangler and the Gladiator for that matter, both have solid front axles and have for forever. And it is more off-road capable and there's a lot of durability and very tried and true kind of tractor tech there in running a solid front axle. But I think independent front suspension really does have its merits. And we've seen some of that even just in the Ranger platform itself. But overall, a lot of people underestimate what you can do. And I think one of the biggest things here is that with IFS, your travel's a little bit more limited than it is with a solid front axle. But Ford is also giving you the ability to pair this with that Sasquatch package where you can get bigger 35 inch tires and you're gonna be able to get front and rear lockers in that. And then on certain packages, you can also do that disconnecting front sway bar. So there's a lot of stuff there to really benefit the truck to still make sure you're getting good wheel traction, even if it can't stretch quite as far in the front end. It's one of those things, in my opinion, there's a lot of IFS vehicles right now that get around very well if you have a good locker or set of lockers, good set of tires and some driving skill. Personally, I've driven a lot of IFS vehicles and I've been able to take them to Moab. I've been up and down, you know, Black Bear, Imogene Pass, places in Colorado, Crown King here in Arizona. There's a lot of really intense, fun trails you can hit with a capable IFS vehicle and a decent set of tires. So just knowing how to pick your lines and use the tools that they give you, I think helps a lot here. And one of the biggest things that people seem to forget is with independent front suspension, we're also gonna get a lot more controlled and better feeling on road ride out of this truck than you probably will out of a Wrangler. That's one of the big areas that those have always suffered is you know, even with JKs and JLs being a bit newer, they're still a little unwieldy on the road once you start to modify them just because of their bones underneath. So I think the Bronco is really gonna lend itself to being a bit more attractive to people who want something that's comfortable on the road and controllable and doesn't have quite as many tractor characteristics underneath. Now with the IFS stuff out of the way, I do wanna talk really quickly about the interior. I'm not gonna dive into every option once again, but I felt like overall Ford presented a really good interior in both the two and four door trucks. The actual leather and fabric combinations look really great. And then obviously even the more bassy trucks, it's a pretty clean setup in there. Now they do have that eight and 12 inch touch screen that you can option between for these trucks that's gonna be running Sync 4. That's a great infotainment system. I think Sync works better than most of the other ones on the market. So that's definitely a big plus for the Bronco. And while touchscreens are definitely the in thing right now, I am more of a physical touch button and dial kind of person. I like that tactile feedback and not having to look at a screen to make a selection, especially while I'm driving. So I was happy to see that there are some dials and buttons underneath the screen for running climate control or some of the audio controls, as well as things like your lockers and traction control. Those are all physical buttons. That's really, really nice to have, especially in an off-road vehicle because you can't just be staring at the screen the whole time. So all of that's good. Obviously, depending on the model, you have the ability to get some washable rubberized flooring with drain plugs. There's also you know, some more durable vinyl seats that are a bit more washable. That just kind of varies depending on how you option the truck or what packages you get. 
And then another thing that I noticed that I really liked was that big accessory bar across the top of the dash, which allows you to put some mounts on there for a phone or a GPS or a GoPro, things like that. It's a really, really cool addition. And there's a power outlet up there too. So you can run your charger straight from the front of the windshield kind of into that little accessory area. And that's a lot cleaner than just having chargers running up and over your dash or in the way of your screen or your buttons. It's pretty smart. I think Ford was really clever throwing stuff like that in there. It just gives this that little bit of edge over the Wrangler in the technology section. Now, lastly, talking trim levels here, there's a couple different packages that Ford put out for this vehicle that sort of move away from their traditional naming system. Instead of having like XL, XLT, FX4, so on, they moved into some specific names that are a bit more off-roady to suit the Bronco family. So what you have is their just standard bare bones base model Bronco. Then you have the Big Bend, which kind of changes the grill, adds some creature comforts, different wheels. And then Black Diamond, which is sort of like the FX4 in my mind. This one's gonna add some better bumpers, you know, upgraded bash plates. You're gonna see that vinyl seating, the rubberized flooring, a lot more off-road equipment there. And with each of these, you're also gaining one of their GOAT modes, which is an all-terrain mode. That doesn't hugely speak to me, but they add another one with this. Outer Banks is kind of like a Jeep Sahara that's gonna add some LEDs, heated seats, touchscreen, you know, luxury items. Then with the Wild Track, you're gonna be looking more at like a Raptor package of the Bronco. Wild Track has that Sasquatch package with the 35s on there ready to go, as well as obviously the lockers that come with it. You're also getting the upgraded Bilstein suspension and some luxury items on top of that. So definitely a little bit more of a desert runner as far as the Bronco is concerned, but just a very capable package. And then Badlands is what they're kind of comparing to the Rubicon as the top tier, most capable one you can get. This has that upgraded suspension. It's got the sway bar disconnect. You're gonna see the vinyl seats and floors. Everything's washable. And overall, the look is a bit more rugged. You're getting a different grill once again, as you do with pretty much all of these packages. And then lastly is that first edition, which is just the completely loaded crazy one that you're probably not gonna buy anyways. But with all those packages, I feel like Ford maybe has a few more than they necessarily needed, but I do like the way that most of them look and there is some cool variation in there. I felt like the Big Bend had a really cool throwback grill to it with the way it looks and the gray tint, as well as a pretty nice looking wheel. But personally for me, I could see myself and a lot of other people going for a base model, something like a two door base that's a lot more stripped down, but has that Sasquatch package upgrade so you can get the 35s right off the bat and especially get those lockers right off the bat. And then, you know, throwing in a few other upgrades either through Ford or through the aftermarket to change whatever, you know, wheel combination you want, add different bumpers, put a winch on there, you know, lights, whatever it may be. And you kind of just dress it up as you go instead of putting all the money in up front to get a bunch of luxury package stuff. Those versions don't speak to me as much. I feel like the Black Diamond could also be really popular as kind of a light version of the FX4, if you will, where you still have the ability to build onto it and you could upgrade it with that package for lockers and get something that's really capable. I feel like the Bronco is an excellent offering from Ford. I'm very excited to see what it's like in person and to get hands on with it, drive one, you know, for us to have the chance here to build them and start modifying and seeing how capable it can really get. All that's gonna be huge. The Bronco looks really good on paper and from everything we've seen in the reveal. So now it's just a matter of waiting till it comes out and seeing if it meets what it says on paper when you actually take it out on the trail. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be curious to hear your thoughts in the comments on what you think about the Bronco or how you would option your own Bronco if you were gonna pick one up in the next year. So with that, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.